What in the world, Bo? What's going on with you, man? It's your boy, Big Low Country. I hope that everybody out there is doing great. Well, actually, today. I hope that everybody out there is doing great today. For everybody out there that don't know me, my name is Big Low Country. I'm just an old country boy, former football coach that loved to sit around and talk about sports. Look, you could have been anywhere in the world today. I'm used to saying tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world today, but you're here with us, and I definitely and greatly appreciate that. Um, look, first of all, if you're watching the show after we've gone live already, make sure that you put a what in the world bow in the comments. Also, make sure that you share this channel with your friends and family. And I have an announcement to make. Dramatic pause. Atlanta Falcons football is back. Here we are. We're we're right here and no longer on the precipice. We got a chance to see some of our players play today, and it was a beautiful feeling. Great seeing everybody. I enjoyed, you know, linking up with everybody and taking pictures and everything else. And, you know, the crazy thing is, is that this is only the beginning. I, that, that's what I'm loving about it. This is only the beginning of the process. So, look, man, I definitely appreciate everybody for coming on and chopping it up with us. And um, look, we're going to have a great time. We're going to talk about what i seen today at Atlanta Falcons training camp. Um, and, you know, basically kind of talk about the whole experience and, you know, if it's one of those situations where you're trying to come out there tomorrow or Saturday, you know, we'll definitely, uh, you know, definitely want to speak with you about that as well. So look at here. First of all, let me show love to everybody that's showing love to us. You know how we do it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ayan Patel, what's going on, man? What in the world, Bo? Hope you're doing good today, my family. Cortez Sherman's in here says, what in the world, Bo? Hope everybody's doing well today. Hey, man, I hope that you're doing good as well, my brother. Definitely do. Um, <laughs> Stefan says, was it hot out there? It was It was steaming out there. As a matter of fact, I got a story about that because um, look, it's one of those, um, uh, it's one of those situations where uh, we, um, it's one of those situations where, you know, somebody had like a, a, a little medical episode. So yeah, man. Yeah, it was, it was definitely hot out there, man. Um, that's why it's important to make sure you hydrate before, during, and after. After. <laughs> because it was hot out there, Bo. It was definitely hot out there. Oh, okay. Um, also, let's see here. Tony Rice says, it's Big Low. Welcome back. Uh, you've been out of the country in Milan, Italy with Julio, uh, and associates for 10, what in the world? What you talking about, Tony? That was you. We was actually talking about you on the show the other night. I was like, man, Tony, I guess he, I guess the plane is out of service. D. Lawton, what in the world, Bo? Hope you're doing good tonight. Regina says, hand wink, waving. <laughs> Much love to you, Regina. Much love to you. Um, uh, Aeon says, I, you know, I, I really don't know if, if we're going to be going to all of them. Um, it it kind of depends on what I got done um, and, you know, and, and you know, what kind of, Tours I got around the house that Coach Roney got for me. CR100 says, said it once, I said it again. Falcons going crazy. Patrick Swayze this season, Super Bowl season. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, what's that? Um, uh, Zio? So what in the world, Bo? Man, Clark. Oh, my goodness. This defense is looking legit. Raymond Elder, what in the world, Bo? Hope you're doing good. AJ Evans is in here. Just imagine going from 100 degrees today to Chicago and free. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, Keith D says, new to the chat, right? Well, look, everybody, I make sure y'all welcome Keith to the chat. So, moving forward, um, you're going to make sure that you, uh, first of all, if you have Twitter, um, first of all, if you have Twitter, make sure that you follow at Big Low Country. Um, we're on Twitter, and, you know, we're always having football and life conversations on Twitter, and, you know, it's crazy questions like, does spaghetti and fish go together? You know, and we also talk about football. But if you're on Twitter, make sure that y'all go on there and check out um, some of the highlights that a lot of these content creators have been putting on, um, putting up there online. Um, it, of course, it's one of those seasons where it has everybody talking. And what I mean whenever I say that is what, think about this. Every year at training camp, and if you're new to the chat, you know, you're going to hear us throw a term around a lot. Every year around training camp, we, you know, we as fans, we tend to get naked. You know, somebody makes a play. You know, somebody gets an interception. A quarterback throws an interception. 
something happens and, you know, all of a sudden this guy, he's going to be a pro bowler. He's going to the Hall of Fame. This guy, he's not going to be any good. We might need to start looking for a replacement. I'm here as a voice of reason to tell everybody, R-E-L-A-X, relax, relax. So why I say that? You say, hey, coach, why do you say that? I'm going to tell you something. Desmond Ritter, um, he threw he threw an interception yesterday. Everybody kind of got all up in their feelings. Like night, they were listening to Drake. Threw the ball too long. Threw it deep in double coverage. Had one guy behind him, one guy in front of him. Threw it in double coverage. Jalen Hawkins got the interception. The day, there was another interception. You know, Desmond Ritter didn't only throw an interception. Uh, I think Taylor Heineke threw one, maybe two. Um, but... The big question that we have to ask ourselves is, was it the defense playing that good? Was it a quarterback using training camp for what training camp is for and seeing what you can do? You know, seeing all the throwing that we've been doing in the offseason, seeing if it's actually working and seeing what we can get away with. Or, you know, did the quarterback just throw a pick? That's what we don't know. This is the second day of training camp. Um, I don't know if y'all heard, because, you know, I, I, I keep my ear to the streets, you know, because, and shout out, shout out to my homeboy, Big Q, because um, I was on this chat last night, and, boy, those Saints fans are feeling themselves. I mean, they are, oh, my goodness. They're acting like it's not a doubt in the world that they're going to make it to the, or that they're going to win the division. But thing is, is that, um, a lot of people might not know this. The first 10, 15 minutes of practice, Derek Carr threw three interceptions. I don't know what the final tally was, but once again, we can't really go off of that, right? So, I mean, look, it's one of those situations where, you know, we got to keep those kinds of things in mind. John Brooks is in here. What's going on, John? He says, uh, what in the world, Bo? Big Low said, do you hear about Joe Burrow? It looks like he have, may have a torn Achilles. So I heard that it was a strained um, – calf but um i mean look either one of them if it's a strained calf you know i can see it being out for a few weeks i've had that strained calf before if it's a torn achilles that that's gonna be tough to come back from uh, you know let's hope let's hope you know for his sake that it's just a strained calf uh what's going on shy much love to you both hope you're doing good today my family Coach Roney says, uh, welcome to the chat. Keith D, you have one of my favorite names. Yes, yes. Shouts out to Keith. Jordan says, what in the world, Bo? Hope you're doing well. Uh, Falcon Spoke, yes, it is back. It is back. And everybody showed up and showed out, including my homeboy, Yuri. He was he was there chilling out with us today down there at the bottom of the hill. Um, Shouts out to Yuri and um, everybody else that we got a chance to see today, man. We got so much love today. I mean, everybody, you know, from the... What in the world, bowls that I got yelled at us to, to the to the selfies, to the pictures. You know, I mean, man, it, it, it was it was just a great, great environment. Great environment. Give game sports talks in here. What's going on, Bo? Hope you're doing good. Um, Tony Wright says, I heard y'all sealed another deal. How's the food in Italy? I, I heard y'all sealed a deal for come on, man. Come on, Tony. We know that we we know that we know who really doing the big names. Barbara Ridley's in here. Says I'm trying to go Saturday with the dirty. Okay. Dirty Bird's Nest showing up and showing out. Come together Saturdays. Ghost Pepper says, what in the world, Bo? What's going on, Ghost? Hope you're doing good today, my brother. Hope you're doing good today, man. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Douglas is in here. He says, two more weeks until my Falcons team uh, until my Falcons team get to work. Yeah, so I'm glad that you mentioned that, Doug, because I'm thinking if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this is this is Jamel's Jamel Hills first, or much love. Welcome to the stream, Jamel. Definitely glad and excited that you had a chance to come in and chop it up with us. Welcome to the coaching staff. This is one thing that we also have to keep in mind. So I don't know if y'all remember, I actually did a, a video, a pre-recorded video on Desmond Ritter like a month ago, whenever we went to the um to the Atlanta Falcons first look during OTAs and you know, basically, we were saying, "Hey, you got you got your your practice throws," and I always say, "You know, you throw footballs as a quarterback. It's not a trick shot contest, right?" Then you have your you know your your skeleton throws, you know, where it's just you know guys running the routes, and you just got to throw it to them whenever they come out of their breaks. 
Then you have your situations where, okay, one-on-ones, you know, let me see if I can get the guy the ball at the appropriate time, see if he can stack that that cornerback or that DB or linebacker that's guarding him. Then you have your actual game time situations. In OTAs, those game time situations ain't nobody hitting nobody else. So, you know, that's the only thing that we have to keep in mind. We haven't even gotten to the pads yet. You know, we, we haven't got to the to the point where, hey, you know, we hitting, you know that I'm coming, I'm trying to get to you, I'm hitting your offensive lineman, you hear pads popping in front of you, and it's live rounds going. Of course, in training camp, we ain't hitting the quarterback, right? Quarterback ain't getting hit to the preseason. But, you know, you you, we, we, you make a good point in that uh, regard, though. See if Garrett's in here, much love to you. <laughs> T-Law says, he want to fight Steve Smith. What y'all want to fight Steve Smith for? Just do like I do and just prove him wrong. You know, when everybody, when people come with hate, you beat hate with success, bro. That's all you got to do. Eric Howell says, salute to you, coach. What's good, y'all? Our boys are looking good. Uh, people sleeping on us. Remember the statement in three months. Hey, I, I, I'm riding with you, coach. Christopher Roach here, here says, what in the world, bro, man? Our nickels were on them boys like white on rice. And a glass of milk on the paper plate in the snowstorm. That's how it was, bro. Regina says, um, do you have threads? Uh, Twitter is. <laughs> uh, I, I don't I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, but yeah, so moving forward, let's let's just talk about a few key moments. Um, a few key moments in in, in this training camp. So mind you. This is my first year actually sitting down on the bottom, um, you know, down near the field. Before, I used to sit up at the top of the hill, you know, because I'm going through my whole coaching situation. I'm trying to learn how to enjoy things like a fan, opposed to opposed to watching things like a coach. So, I was a little bit more laid back this time, right? <clears throat> so, whenever I was sitting down near the bottom, um... You know, I couldn't actually have a chance to see, you know, look down on everybody to see exactly, you know, what I need to witness. But one thing that I can tell you is that um, Zach Harrison got a sack. You know, he, he, you know, he legit got a sack. Once again, we know they're they're not hitting. There ain't nobody popping no pads. But you know, the fact that he had the the footwork and the handwork to get to the quarterback in a timely manner. Um, you know, in the seven on sevens, um, it's one of those situations where I think that's a really, really good thing. We know that Zach Harrison is a physical specimen, right? But the fact that he had, like, once again, he had the footwork and he had the handwork to actually get back there to the quarterback, I love it. So now that we're going, now that we're sitting here and getting to it, and you know, I just brought up Zach Harrison. He was one of the guys that stood out to me today. I'm going to tell y'all something. Also, make sure if you're excited that Atlanta Falcons training camp is here and you need a way to express it, make sure that you hit that like button. If you hit that like button for me, I promise you I'll dance at your wedding one day. But this defense, and y'all know I asked the question a little bit earlier, is it your is it your, your quarterback seeing what he could do? Did the quarterback just throw a pick? Or is the defense looking different? Is the defense looking good? I'm going to tell y'all something. This Atlanta Falcons defense this year is going to be like something we haven't seen in a very, very, very long time. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. This defense is going to be something like we haven't seen in a very long time. Bro. You got guys out here like Clark Phillips, like Zach Harrison, two rookies, mind you, two rookies. You also got guys like Jalen Hawkins, mind you, Yes, Jalen Hawkins, it seems like every year during training camp and in the preseason, you know, he's showing up and showing out. Then whenever the regular season comes, he had his chance to start last year. He, you know, he, he kind of let us down. But we had to acknowledge who he was playing with. But these guys like Zach Phillips, uh, Zach Harrison, dang, I, don't, I keep calling that kid Zach Phillips because he that's the same name one of my football players. Zach Harrison, um, Clark Phillips, Troy Anderson. Troy Anderson got a really good deflection on a one B. John Robinson earlier today on an out route. 
the thing is, is that the guys that are making the plays are these young Thundercats. And I'm going to tell you something. There's one guy, I guess we could consider him a vet by now. You know, he, I mean, you know, maybe we could just call him a Thundercat because he ain't a, he ain't a wild vet. But this young Thundercat named Jeff Okuda. Our angel, he was out there getting naked when we were talking about Jeff Okuda because he said, you know, he asked me, he said, hey, coach, who is, who is your guy? Who is the guy whenever he makes a play, you know, you – you know, it gets you going. I, t I tell him, I say, hey, man, I just want to see Kyle Pitts be so successful. I really feel like he kind of got the short end of the stick last year playing in the situation that he was playing in. But we're going to go down that road a little bit later. But Jeff Okuda is playing like he's that top 10 draft pick that the Detroit Lions were expecting him to be. Mind you, you know, I, I was talking about Jeff Okuda. Shouts out to Jeff Okuda, first of all. I wanted to get a chance to highlight him because, you know, I want to give him his credit for rocking that 1950s part on the side of his head. You know, I might do it one day because he make it look so fly. But Jeff Okuda is out here playing like he's that top 10 pick that everybody was expecting him to be whenever he first got drafted by the Lions, you know, a few years ago. I mean, let's be honest. There were a whole lot of people out here that were saying, hey, I might want Akuda more than I wanted A.J. Terrell. And we see how it ended, but it's kind of like my homeboy Larry from the Dixon Way was saying whenever we were live on his show at training camp, he was like, hey, man, um, we got both of them. <laughs> so it was one of those situations where like, oh, okay, you know what? We showed no dude. Dre Woods in here. What in the world, bro? Says John o. Smith and Matt Hollins. Boy, Matt Hollins. I seen Matt Hollins. So the wide receivers were working out right in front of us, right? So you know we were, you know, child. We were we were they were going through their drills, and you know, of course, Jack Spade from one time for the fan. You know he you know he was shouting out all the all the wide receivers saying everything to him, and um, Matt Hollins, boy, that Matt Hollins looks bigger than Drake London, and he looks just as big as Kyle Pitts. That's a jump ball all day, bro. Rodney Reed says, uh, what's up, Big Low? Ready for football, bro. I'll be at the home opener against the Kitty Cats. We're going to be in there, bro. Live in full effect. Live in full effect. It's going down like there's a well in the boat. Definitely, man. My homeboy Twisted is in here. What's going on, Twisted? Oh, you got me twisted over here. Shouts out to you, bro. Hope you're doing good today, my family. Shouts out to my homeboy Twisted, man. Got to love that energy that man be bringing. Atlanta Bird Games in the house. Shouts out to Tidy. I see you, man. I see you. I see you. Hope you're doing good, my brother. Tidy, boy. You, tidy be tripping me out. Um, he says, Big Low, what you eat at Falcons Camp? So, <sighs> excuse me. Um, So, you know, we got there. I got there Superman early. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's a situation where I still think about it as like a, a coach or think about it as being around football, but I don't really believe in like eating. So whenever I used to coach football, I used to walk around with, uh, I used to walk around with uh, sunflower seeds in my pocket and I'd, you know, I'd be eating my sunflower seeds and drinking water whenever I got a chance. Only ranch and, and, and barbecue, mind you. Um, Chops out to uh, Carrie. She told me I need to try the, the, the pickle sunflower seeds, but I, I ain't really getting nothing. Cause once again, you know, I got there at like six something or seven, uh, six, uh, but anyway, it was, I think, I don't remember what time I got there, but anyway, it was one of those situations where, um, as far as the, uh, as far as what I ate, they had like Philly cheesesteaks there and empanadas and stuff like that. But I was sitting here like, Hey man, I don't want to eat nothing that heavy so early. Because I know the camp started at like 9 o'clock. So I was legit sitting here like, man, I don't want to eat nothing that early. So I, I I just waited until afterwards and got something. And, you know, by then I was I was hungry, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. I was ready to eat bark off a tree. Steph Bonds is what in the world, bro? They say Freddie the Falcon intercepted the Ritter's pass today. Please, come on, man. Come on, man. Padres in here. Say, hey, coach, I plan to act up and Big Q stream tonight uh, after – Broken down car, got no pick. Come on, man. Come on, Bubba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He threw, he threw like three picks in the first, in the first fifteen minutes. Once again, we can't go off of that, Padre. But 
He threw three picks in like the first 15 minutes. Dun, da, da. That's a Superman chat. Shouts out to my homeboy, Padre, man. Padre said, hey, coach, let me know. Let me know what you've seen at, at training camp today. And once again, what I was going, what the direction I was going in, shouts out to Drake. He says, I want a Cooter that year. I ain't going to lie. Jeff Okuda, Jeff Okuda was legit making plays. And he wasn't just making plays in a one-on-one. Like, he was in the right position all the time when it came to just straight-up coverage. Now, Clark Phillips, once again, he got that pick on, on Drake London. And my sources tell me that Drake London got in his feelings because y'all know this rivalry goes back to college in the Pac-10 whenever Drake London was on USC, Clark Phillips was playing in Utah. Them boys used to battle back and forth. So, Clark Phillips got a pick on Drake London the first day of the open practice. I'm going to tell y'all what happened. So, Drake, he ran a, like, he ran a little stutter and go. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he released to the inside. He couldn't stack him. He was trying to stack him, but he couldn't stack him. And Clark Phillips, he was right there in his, in, in his pocket. The ball was underthrown. Heineke underthrew the ball. So, it's like, you know, Drake's supposed to turn around and hit the you know, he was supposed to turn around and hit the, the, the reach over. He couldn't do it. Clark Phillips popped it up in the air, tracked the ball. I need a tip drill. I need a – picked it off. The whole DB room went crazy. The whole DB room went crazy. I was like, hey, man, I love it. I love it because because those are the kind of plays that you want to see. Look, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I feel like Clark Phillips was a steal. I feel like he was a steal. Jalen – Hilton in here says, it's simple. Desmond is a winner. Winner's win will be good. Yeah, yeah. Molly Mom says, is it me or does someone else feel air? What, what, what in the world? Molly Mom, boy, you were, this a family show, bro. You can't be coming on here talking like that. John Higgins, what in the world, man? Hope you're doing good. Man, look, man, Coach Runner had me all over the place. Coach Runner, false our faculty, just a little gas. Hey, boy, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. I'm looking out for old country, boy. You know, hey, anything I can get, I appreciate it. That's that. Dun, dun, dun. That's a Superman chat. Much love to you, Bo. Hope you're doing good. Uh, Padre says, uh, hey, coach and staff, uh, the light button looking a little lonely. I hit it. Have you? Okay. All right, man. Peer pressure. Ain't nothing wrong with that. John Hickey says, big load. That pass to Drake London. With the, it, it, and it was. It, it, it was thrown short. And like I said, he was, he was trying to stack him. He couldn't stack him because Clark Phillips had that speed on him. And, you know, that's one of those situations where, you know, if you could just put it up, you know, if he don't have to slow down and turn around and hit the reach over, he would have been good. But it, it was underthrown. It was underthrown. And I think that's why Drake London was in his feelings so much because, you know, he wants to make sure that he, you know, establishes dominance over Clark Phillips ever since their, their college days. But I better tell you, that's what you want at the end of the day. You want that kind of competition, you know, during during practice and during training camp because whenever the actual games come, you know, we already know what we're going to do. We finna come, we finna compete in practice, in the film room, at training camp, and in the games. It doesn't matter whether it's preseason or regular season, playoff, Super Bowl game. It don't matter. We're trying to make sure we show up and show out. And that's what these guys are trying to do. Um, so let's see here. Um, and then, uh, like I said, Caden Ellis. You know, Caden Ellis. He, you know, you know, he he was doing a lot of work around the line of scrimmage. It was kind of like I said, you know, before this season started. I really feel like Caden Ellis. He's not as good in coverage, and we really need to make sure that we have that coverage linebacker that can. You know, that could play that strong side if that tight end releases that could kind of make sure that they take care of the seams and everything underneath. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'll be honest with y'all. I don't know if it's predisposed notions or anything like that, but my, Michael Walker just ain't doing it for me. I, I I don't know if I'm still thinking about last year or what, but, but Michael Walker is, is really – It's like I was telling Twisted Torch a little bit earlier. I mean, I, just looking at our whole defense, the front end looks looks a whole lot better. 
the back end looks a whole lot better. I really feel like we need to do something with that linebacker room. You know, and, and I threw a name out there, and you know, I don't know if y'all would agree with it or not, but I threw a name out there and Quan Alexander. But it's like my homeboy Twisted Torch was saying, like, hey, man, maybe they're worried that he might not stay healthy, and maybe they're just trying to go ahead and go with, with Michael Walker because, let's be honest, Michael Walker, he made some plays in coverage last year. Um, but, I mean, moving forward, he also – Hurt a lot when it came to the run game. We, you know, they was running those run fits. I mean, I seen a couple times he just hit the he just hit the wrong gap. He just hit the wrong gap. So I mean, those are the things we got to keep in mind. Uh, Connor's in here. Connor says, "Coach, I'm jumping in late, and I don't want to change the subject too much, but I'm working on my game day playlist based on the vibe you've seen uh, from the team. What are a few songs you recommend?" <laughs> Oh, man. Well, look, I definitely appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's that. Da, da, da. That's a Superman chat. <laughs> um, what kind of songs I would recommend, to be completely honest with you, I, I would recommend some, some gritty songs. Um, I don't think there'll be too many um, uh, passion fruits from Drake. Passionate from miles away, passionate from things. I, I, I don't think there'll be too many, you know, too many things like that. I, I don't think there'll be no, um, you know, no ushers, no. Hey, so I just like, nah. I think you know you'll, you know, you have some Pastor Troy, some um, uh, Eight Ball, MGJs, um, a little bit of. Um, um, a little bit, of little John Eastside boys, um, you know, for these young Thundercats out there, I would say some NBA young boy, um, uh, some little baby, you know, I would say the, I, I, I would say the early young thug stuff. I, 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 I think it'll be that kind of stuff, Martell. I think it'll be that kind of stuff. Uh, Mike Jinks in here says, "What in the world, Bo? How about them? How them dirty birds looking? Dun da da. That's a Superman chat." Man, the Dirty Birds looking good, man. they and and that kind of goes along with, with with Connor's question. You know, what kind of playlist would you put? Some some something nasty, dirty and gritty. That's that's what I'm looking at whenever I'm thinking about these boys. They're they're looking like Dirty Birds again. They're not looking like the you know the hey we're gonna see if we can air this thing out and see what we can do about beating you from you know over the top and, you know, make sure we make the right throws at the right time. Um, it's crazy because 92-9, the game, they had a 10 out there and they interviewed Arthur Smith. And basically they were saying, hey, um, it's one of those situations. Well, they were asking Arthur Smith, like, what does he think about the offense? And I kind of left it with mixed emotions, guys. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Excuse me. I kind of left it with mixed emotions. The reason why I say that is because, look, so Arthur Smith said, hey, you know, if you look at the 2021 season, you look at the 2022 season, we actually played, you know, we, we played to our strengths. Our offense was completely different. And he said, that's how it's going to be moving forward. That's how it's going to be this year. You know, we're going to play to our strengths. So moving forward, it was one of those cases where, you know, they, they were like, well, you know, do you think this offense is going to be more explosive than it was last year? And he said, well, I mean, I'll tell you like this right here. That this year, you know, um, we got the personnel that we necessarily want. And it's one of those cases where, you know, if you look back at what we did in Tennessee, he said, I would say that we were pretty explosive. <sighs> I look back at those Tennessee days. Yes, A.J. Brown did make some plays. Uh, he made a lot of plays. It ended up getting him, I think, the highest paid deal in the NFL for a short period of time. Um, Fersker made some plays. Tajay Sharp made some plays. Um, Corey Davis made a few plays. You know, they handed the ball to Derrick Henry a whole bunch. And I'm thinking that whenever we think explosive, and once again, when I say we, you know, I, I don't want to be like I got a mouse in my pocket, but when I say we, I'm talking about it like, you know, as fans, we think explosive. We're thinking 50, 60 yard bombs, 
Patrick Mahomes type plays. But whenever NFL coaches think it's explosive, they're thinking 20 yards or more. And, um, you know, and basically he was like, hey, yeah, I mean, I, I think I was pretty – I think we were pretty doggone explosive. And I'm going to tell you how it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you you sitting in a room, you know, a room full of people in your family – and somebody talks about potato salad and the person who, you know, who puts raisins in their potato salad, they were like, oh, yeah, I'm making the potato salad because everybody loves my potato salad. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? It's, I mean, it's kind of one of those situations like, oh, yeah, I mean, I say we were pretty explosive. <laughs> but I do want to ask y'all. Look, if if you're hoping that this Atlanta Falcons offense is explosive, you know a way that you can express that. You can express that by making sure that you hit that like button. That's how you can express it. If you want to express how explosive you want the Atlanta Falcons to be, and if you want to be really explosive, just hit that like button. I would definitely appreciate that. Dre says, "Big low." Did Archie Smith mustache make any plays today, man? Archie Smith mustache had five sacks, two fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and a block punt. <laughs> my homeboy, let's get it. Much love to you, Bo. Hope you're doing good, my brother. Hope you're doing good. Christy says, hey, y'all, what in the world, Bo? All the way from South Mississippi. Much love to you, Coach. Christy, Jordan Farmer's in here. What in the world, Bo? Connor says, heck yeah, we're going to blow our speakers out uh, on the way to the bins. Uh, just like the rest of the league, they're going to hear us coming. There you go, Bo. That's it. That's it. We got to bring it to their front door, man. dun dun da that's a Superman chat. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. But yes, yes, you you are definitely right, Connor. We got to bring it to their front door, man. They got to hear us coming. Barbara says, oh, we got London on the track. We'll be, a, I mean, hey, you know, pretty much. I count six shots. But it's not bad, though. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh, man. Molly Mall says, Big Low, you know about raisins and potato salad. He said he make it all the time like that. He put raisins in potato salad all the time. That's, that's how Molly Mall do it. Aeon says, um, Big Low, did you see the Ryan Nielsen and the Wayne Lefford rivalry on the coaching offense of the defensive line? So I mean I didn't see I didn't I, I didn't see uh Ryan Nielsen and, and Lefford. I didn't see them, but I can tell you that they were competing like they had pads on. Whenever I was watching those guys, like the offensive and defensive lines were competing like they had pads. That's why I said it. it's like Zach Harrison got a sack, and I'm like, oh, 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 okay. You know, I thought this is, you know, I I, I thought we just run eleven on elevens, coach. I ain't know, mind you, mind you, since because you know normally they run fifteen plays, seven on sevens, fifteen plays, eleven on elevens. So the two practices that I've seen. Whenever they did uh, 11 on 11s, Zach Harrison got a sack the two times that I had a chance to watch him. I watched him um, in the uh, on the first look in OTAs, and I watched him today. Zach Phillips got a sack. Zach Harrison, golly boy, I keep calling that guy Harrison. I mean, Colin Phillips. Zach Harrison got a sack. So, I mean, once again, it, it's one of those cases where I mean, that's good because once we're, we're working on that hand where Ryan Nielsen is the perfect guy that's going to be coaching Zach Harrison to get him to the next, you know, the next phase of his career. And, you know, hopefully years to come, they're going to be looking at him saying, man, I can't believe he went that late. He should have been a first round pick. Aaron says, uh, who impressed you the most on offense and defense these past two days? <sighs> So I don't know if you heard me talking a little bit earlier on defense. It seems like Jalen Hawkins every the last two or three years, everybody's like, "Man, Jay Hawk, Jalen Hawkins, he's just he's he's catching everything. He's breaking up passes. He's doing all kinds of stuff." Pro Bowl, and then we get to the regular season, and you know he he comes back to form. He got an interception today. Got an interception yesterday. Maybe this year with a different defensive coordinator, he could. You know, he, he could do something different. Um, but uh, on offense, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. Um, Mac Hollins. Mac Hollins. Not only did he impress me when he walked out on the field, because I, I knew that he was tall, but I did not know that. I did not know that man was that big. Like like I said, they were practicing right in front of us. 
I mean, can somebody Google and look up Mac Hollins' measurables? I didn't know that he was that big. He looked like he was bigger than Kyle Pitts. He looked like he was bigger than Drake London. Like, Mac Hollins, when he just walked out on the field, I was like, oh, man. Jump ball in the corner all day. All day. Fade route all day. I mean, and the crazy thing is, is that he can move, guys. He can move. We got a ball head Falcons fan in here. It says John o. Smith on offense was looking good. Uh, B. John was looking nice too. Man, B. John was looking. <sighs> it's kind of like what they were saying. Uh, I don't know if you heard uh, Grady Jarrett talk about it. He was like, the thing is, is that if you have guys, you have guys that legit, you see them on tape and they look good. But whenever you see them in person, it's a whole nother story. It's a whole nother story. Um, Ira Howell says, what in the world, Bo? Uh, Coach Art, mustache is shaped like the Atlanta overhang. At <laughs> okay. <laughs> Padre says, uh, Molly Maul, get some spark pulls for your car. It's misfiring. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Uh, so a ball head Falcons fan said Matt Hollins is six four two twenty one. I mean, he he could legit be six four. He looked like he was six five six six to me. I see him standing next to Drake London, and maybe it was the hair. Maybe that's what it is, because you know he had like the Lions main deal going on. But he looked like he was bigger. He was definitely you know more stout than Drake London, and he looked like you know. He looked like he was more stout than, than Kyle Pitts, too. But, like, Kyle Pitts just looked. I mean, he looks like a wide receiver, and they talk about he's 245, 250. But he looks like he's the same size as a Matt Hollins. Somebody ain't telling the truth. Somebody lying somewhere. I don't I don't know. We need to find a lie. We need to play a game and find a lie because I just don't understand what's going on. Um, Dick Button says, Tiptoe Walker kept tip. Towing in my Jordans. Goodness gracious, boy. I, I, <sighs> Dick, Dick, you hit the nail on the head, bo. He you hit the nail on the head. It's like and, and, and that's the that that's that's the issue that I have with Michael Walker. It's like he plays like he's scared. Like I hold I seen a whole bunch of fault stepping. I seen a whole bunch of just being in the wrong position. We were playing run fits and he was hitting the wrong gaps. It's almost like he's not understanding that we're playing a, a zone run blocking scheme. He needs to follow the gap. You know, he, I don't know if he's trying to play hero ball and shoot it just in case he thinks somebody cuts back or something. And and maybe that's what the coaches are telling him. Like, hey, if you trust it, put your foot in the ground and go because you think they're cutting back. But I, I – and, and once again, it, it's one of those cases where, you know, We've seen them the last couple of years make plays in the passing game. The running game is where we have the biggest concerns. I mean, because Caden Ellis, he's not going to be able to do it all in the running game. And, and maybe it's, maybe they're trying to put their guys in the best situation to succeed and you know, have um, Troy Anderson do a little bit of both, have Caden Ellis be down around that line of scrimmage where he's most comfortable and have Michael Walker play coverage a little bit more. But I really feel like it's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, four, two, fives, especially those first two downs. And then that last down, you might see, you know, uh, maybe, maybe some um, three, three, five nickel, maybe. Um, or you might see uh, a little bit more strong three, four kind of deal, depending on the down and distance. I mean, so it's, I mean, it's all up in the air. Uh, Jalen Hill says, anything from our speech with Scotty Miller? Man, Scotty Miller, shouts out to him. Uh, my homeboy Jack Spade, he was he was yelling because I was like, well, what's Scotty Miller's 40? And so every time he would come around, uh, you know, Jack Spade was like, hey, Scotty, you run a 439? Scotty was like, lower, lower. So I was like, 435. He was like, lower. I was like, dang, Scotty, you running like that? <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, he definitely looked apart. He definitely looked apart. I was, you know, and I was talking to my homeboy John and um, Fleet, 
and shouts out to Mike too. I didn't get a chance to eat dinner with him, but um, you know, I was talking to him after the after training camp, and basically, you know, we were like, hey, like, who do you think is going to be the the kick returner or the punt returner? And um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but D. Offer he was actually back there um, fielding punts and kicks, but. I would love to see Scotty Miller back there. They shine. What in the world, Bo? Hope you're doing good, man. Ballhead Falcons fan says he looks six six for real. Yes, yes, he 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 definitely looks six six. Um, that whole six four, Aaron two twenty five. I, I I just don't see it. He looks like he's taller and he looks like he's bigger. Yeah, I I just don't see it. Um, but but yeah, I mean Scotty Miller. I know everybody during the offseason said that they wanted a speedster. Well, Bo, you 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 got you one. You 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 got you a guy that's gonna be able to stretch the field, um, and you know if, if they forget about him or if it's a one on one, they're running zone or cover sixes or something like that. And you know if he gets behind somebody, it, it's over. You no, know, the biggest question is, and and you know I know this is this is kind of what everybody was talking about on Twitter. They were talking about Desmond Ritter's deep ball accuracy. The biggest question is, is Desmond Ritter gonna be able to get the ball to him? And, you know, it's a great thing that this come that, you know, this whole situation comes up because I'm going to tell you, this is what training camp is for at the end of the day, right? Training camp is to see what you could do about getting that timing in order because I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was at training camp in 2016 um, whenever we had the, you know, the, uh, Taylor Gabriels and Muhammad Sanu's, Julio Jones, Allen Robinsons, and Matt Ryan, he was missing on some deep passes early in training camp. No, I don't know who else was there, but Matt Ryan was missing on some passes early in training camp. What did they go on to do? And I'm not saying this is going to be the same exact situation, but they went on to have one of the best offenses in NFL history. So we can't really go off based off of the first two days in training camp. You know, I I think the uh, one thing that we need to look at the most is the, uh, you know, let, let's see what happens in these preseason games. And I don't want to be the guy that just keep moving the goalposts and saying, hey, nah, nah, let's wait and see what happens then. Let's wait and see what happens then. Let's wait and see what happens. I don't want to be that guy. But, I mean, let's be honest. And I want to ask the chat what they think. You know, if, if y'all think it's one of those situations where, you know, we're overreacting, because it's the first two days in training camp, put a one in the chat. If you feel like this is cause for concern that, you know, he's had some issues with the deep pass, the deep ball accuracy, and, you know, you feel, you feel like, I mean, I don't care if it's a half a percent reason for cause for concern, put a two in the chat. I, I just want to know what y'all thinking, man. I just want to know what y'all thinking. Definitely. Definitely. Um, wait a minute, Deshaun says, I mean, I see you doing better with a blood clot in my lung, uh, but I'm still, dang, hey, Deshaun, well, look, I'm glad that you kind of let us know what happened, man. I hope that you continue to recover, man. You'll definitely be in mine and the rest of the coaching staff's prayers. Y'all make sure that y'all keep Coach Deshaun in your prayers, man. We'll, hey, look, anything that, any kind of information that, or any thoughts that we have on your Falcons, you know, we'll definitely be re relaying it to you, brother. Definitely, man. Hope you continue to have a speedy recovery. Shaka Zulu's in here. It says, what in the world, Bo? I'm in the building. Hope you're doing good, Shaka Zulu. Much love to you. Definitely, man. Definitely. Prayers for Deshaun. Prayers up for Deshaun, man. Just Farmer said, thank you. think Desmond will be fine. He think Desmond will be fine. Um, Twisted says, uh, why Smith uh, cook baits like that, Lo? <laughs> man, you know how... <laughs> you <laughs> Man, look, I don't know if y'all seen this. I think, I think, I think uh, John Lou Smith ran a, ran a stick and nod. I think he ran a stick and nod. And Bates tried to grab hold to him. But yeah, come on, man, John Lou Smith too big. He too big to be holding on to like that when he run at full speed. And he, he basically shook him loose and caught the pass. And it, it would have been, yeah, he... Yeah, he did him dirty. I think he realized that. Yeah, John o. Smith, he different. You, that that's somebody you can't get away with that for. Yeah, that was yeah that was nasty work. Shook his draws. Well, I ain't even say he shook his draws off. He took his draws off. Anyway, Jermaine Walton. He says one. Hank Deasy, um, D. Lawton. They say one. 
about whatever says what in the world about just got here okay much love to you about whatever john higgins um era antoine wartime they all say one um uh so so they, they feel like there's, there's really no no cause for concern you know um let's see here uh hank D. yes definitely prayers for deshaun ball here faculty said, i seen that <laughs> Little shiesty here. What in the world, Bo? Hope you're doing good, family. Chuck says, uh, the deep ball opens the offense up so much. Uh, we got to get better at it. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, Coach Roney says, Deshaun, glad to hear you're doing better. Um, those glove pots, those glove, glove, those blood clots are so serious. Make sure you take it easy. Definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah, everybody else showing love to you, man. You continue to, you continue to recover for us now. Um, Jalen says, uh, hey, Bo, how do you see the carries being split? Give me your numbers for each uh, back a game. Man, you know, that's, that's kind of tough because, you know, based on Arthur Smith, he seems like a situational kind of guy. But I can see I can see it being a situation where you get – I can see B. John getting, getting 17 carries. I can see Tyler getting – 12, 13 carries, and I can see Cordero getting 10 carries. So at the end of the day, what's that? You're talking like 37 carries, and I can see like 30 pass attempts. You know, if you're fortunate enough to have 65, 70 plays, that's if you're fortunate enough. Um, but, yeah, I, I can see it being split like that. I, I think that, you know, um, the way that they kind of focus on uh, battling and focus on iron, sharpening iron, and they're probably going to go with, hey, man, we're going with the high hand. So if Tyler, you know, if, if, he's, if he's going off, he's averaging eight yards a carry, keep giving the ball to Tyler. Give it to him on his favorite plays. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Lil Shite said, why B. John run? Like, how he run? Lil Shite, the show, you, you got to tell me, how he run? How he run? How you run? Twister says, uh, Ritter, he gonna be good. It's just practice. It's just practice. We're talking about practice. <laughs> this AI voice. Come on, man. Practice. Not a game. Not a game. Practice. <laughs> oh man, no good, but so good says, um, I'm in this piece watching from Ohio. Burrow went down. Man, I heard about that, man. I I definitely want to see Joe Shiesty play this season. Um, some people say it's a strained calf. Some people say it's an Achilles. I'm hoping that it's the calf. Retro G in here says, man, what in the is going on with Steve Smith? Hey. So, I don't know if y'all heard. And, and you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and talk about this. Steve Smith, you know, he was talking with a, a, a wide receiver from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he was saying that the receiver was saying, hey, yeah, I thought Atlanta was going to take me. And then Steve Smith, of course. You know, talking about, hey, Atlanta, they don't got no quarterback. So it raised up a huge uproar. Social media went crazy. You know, everybody, you know, did their rants and, you know, trying to come at Steve Smith. First of all, Steve Smith ain't paying no attention to us. Steve Smith don't care. You know, the only thing that's going to make, the only thing that's going to um, get Steve Smith out of his indifference is Desmond Ritter actually balling out. That's the only thing. So Steve Smith actually today, he put up a video. Um, uh, whenever was it today or yesterday? Put up a video talking about, oh man, who threw this interception? Because you know the ball was just hanging in the air, and he was like, wait a minute, show who threw the interception. Desmond Ritter threw the interception. One of those deep balls we were talking about. Um, receiver was double covered. Had a uh, defender in front of him. Had a defender behind him. Receiver was double covered. It was picked off. So Steve Smith, thinking that he's still playing, he's like, who threw that interception? Talking trash. Like, look, man, calm down and chill out, bro. It ain't even that serious. Get that hate out your heart. What, what, what he needs to do, i to go ahead and be completely honest with you. He needs to schedule the appointment, you know, see if he can get a diagnosis, get an MRI, get an X-ray, see if he can get a prognosis, you know, Schedule the surgery. Don't eat nothing the night before. And go to the surgery and get that hate out of his heart. That's all he need to do at the end of the day. Steve Smith, he don't need to talk about us. He don't need to talk about us. I don't know why he's so in the, so much in his feelings. 
Uh, Jay Hen says Ritter uh, playing against a stiffer defense. Iron sharpens iron. He gonna be okay. That's what I'm talking about, man. Shaka Zulu says one. He just got the timing uh, with his wide receiver defense. Always looks better, and, and that's that's it. You gotta think about it. The defense is made to be disruptive. Offense is always based off of you know timing. It's based off of precision. It's based off of being in the right place at the right time. Defense always going to have the upper hand in the beginning. Let's see what happens at the end of camp. Let's see how it's good looking then. Uncle Steve's in here. He's at one and a half. Okay, you ain't got to be on the fence, Uncle Steve. You give me one or two. He's saying one and a half. Nah, nah. If you're going to be on, if you're gonna be on one side, fully be on that side, uh, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, Jim's Journal says, uh, was at camp today. Desmond didn't look bad today. Day by day. It, 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 he didn't look bad to me. If I'm, I'm being completely honest, Desmond Ritter, he he legit um, looked like, hey, man, like, first of all, everything underneath, he was hitting. Underneath and mid-level, he was hitting. Like I said, it, it's it's deep shots, but you're getting together with your team again. You got to get the timing. You got to you gotta get the feel of every guy that's running deep routes. You you, you got to get the feel for it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not even mad at it. Stephon Mosley, he says too. He says there's cause for concern. Dre says I'm telling you, John is going to be a problem this year. And John has been a problem. He been a problem, Bo. And you're right, Dre. He's going to be a problem this year too. He wasn't a problem with with the Patriots, and you would think he would with everything that you know Bill Belichick did with you know Gronk and Aaron Hernandez. But maybe it was one of those situations where it was it was McDaniel's and it wasn't. And it wasn't Belichick. So, I mean, whenever whenever him and um, Hunter Henry went to – John o. Smith and Hunter Henry went to the Patriots, I was like, oh, man, that might be that might be a good landing place for him. But it, it just didn't work out. 330 says, one, every day count, especially for the players trying to get a spot. Yeah, that's it. Justin Switch says it's cause for concern. Like, we, we might want to – we might want to look into this. Um, Padres is 1.5. It's definitely something to work on, but not necessarily something Terry F. Scrambling uh, took the phone over. I mean, I, and, and, and that's, I mean, look, that's what practice is for. Little Sykes said, B. John, he a rough guy. He could run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He run like a unicorn, boy. He run like a unicorn on the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. That's how your boy running. Shouts out to my homeboy, Big Q, in here. Big Q says, yo, Big Low, shout out to you guys. Look, look, see, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. So, I was on Big Q. I was commenting on Big Q uh, chat later. They were, the Saints fans were feeling themselves, Bo. I mean, I come in there, he put up the, you because y'all know I lost a little bit last year. And, you know, he put up the, the picture of me wearing the shirt and everything. So, so basically, I, and I, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and jump on into this right here, Bo. So basically, some national pundits said they believe that the Saints are going to win the division this year. Saints fans took it, got naked, and ran off with it. Well, I mean, they were they were having a little pep rally in there last night, bro. I like it's, it's, look, it's okay. We, you know, y'all can do all your talking. Y'all can do all your talking. Game one, whenever we see you, it is what it is. I mean. We're just going to have to bring it to your front door. You know, we, we, we're going to have to, that, that used car is going to be a total loss. Make sure that you call your insurance company. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. That's what I'm telling you, Bo. <laughs> oh, man. Jay, he says, uh, the Desmond, uh, he about to torch the Pampers in it, uh, week one. Oh, wow. The Pampers? The Carolina Pampers? Really? Uh, Twitter says, Dre, I like how you worded <laughs> that torch the Pampers. Man, Hal Poole says, it's nice meeting you guys today. Hey, man, we definitely enjoy meeting you, Hal. Much love to you, man. Dansky's in here. Shout out to my big bro, Dansky. All the way from Canada, man. What in the world, Bo? How you doing, man? Winston's in here. What in the world, Bo? What's going on in the chat? Y'all make sure y'all show Winston some love. Shaka Zulu says, uh, Bo, are you going to be out there tomorrow? I'm going. I don't think we're gonna be out there tomorrow, but like I said, ain't no telling. It depends on, you know, it depends on how how we're gonna be looking with with work and everything. And if Coach Roney let me slip away, 
slip away. It, it depends. It depends. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Shouts out to Big Q. The boy, they had all kind of hate in their heart, boy. I mean, no, no Saints fans would go hard in there. I, okay, okay. We can show you better than we can tell you, bro. That's, a, that, that's all it is. As a matter of fact, Q, are you going live tonight? Please, please tell us. Please tell us if you're going live tonight, Q. Brother Q, if you're still in here, please let us know if you're going live tonight because we definitely got to tune in. See, because y'all tried to jump on me last time. You know, I ain't had no backup. Y'all tried to jump on me. Uh, Mac John Daddy, what in the world, bro? Hope you're doing good tonight, man. Hope you're doing good tonight. Um, let's see. Three Dirty says Uncle Steve's Lounge is sticking to his story until he can taste the proof in the. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm I'm looking at this offense. I know there was one there was one um play that we actually went four wide, and we had Drake. No, it was Mac Hollins. Kyle Pitts was lined up in the slide. B. John Robinson came in motion and lined up. Yeah, lined up behind Kyle Pitts, so you still registered in the backfield. Then on the other side, you had Drake and you had John o. Smith. I was like, who do you guard in this situation? Like, what do you do? What do you do in this situation? And I was like, that's scary. That's scary. Because those guys were looking, I mean, and <sighs> Once again, underneath it, it, it was right there. I forgot. I forgot who ended up getting it, but it it, it was it was like SWB. Who do I throw to? Who do I throw to? I'm just gonna find the open man. Do I throw to? Who do I throw to? <laughs> oh. Ramsey War, what in the world, bro? Hope you're doing good, man. Hal Poole says, I see us with an 11-6 and six record. Okay, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. Dre True Statement says, we invading Big Q stream tonight. If so, yes. Yes. If, if Big Q and them, if them boys going live, we got to go on there. Because the same way they talking about us, David Carr throwing three interceptions, the first 15 minutes of practice, yes. A thousand times, yes. Like, they think they can just get away with that. They think they can just get away with that. My homeboy Archangel's in here. What in the world, Bo? Shout out to Archangel. Out there getting naked with Jeff Akuda. I see you, Bo. Um, d Law says, all subject. We never seen one creator go over uh, 100 people in the chat. You the man, Bo. Oh, man. Shoot, man, everybody do that. But, hey, I appreciate that, d Law. Much love to you, Bo. Look, also, make sure that y'all hit that like button. Y'all hit that like button for me. I promise you. promise y'all dance at your wedding one day. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> We're going to have a good time this season, and I'm going to dance at your wedding. I'm going to dance at your anniversary party or any kind of get to your family reunion. I'm going to dance there, Bo. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Chuck says, do you see anything from D'Angelo Malone? I hope he goes off this year. I mean, I didn't see him make any, like, big plays, but, I mean, he looked good moving around out there. Lil Shiesty says, uh, we're going to wreck the heck. Out of Q stream is going down. Yes. Yes. Y'all make sure that y'all check out. Check, check, check it out. See if old Q going on there. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can find old Q. Yeah, there he is. Pro Media Network. And they going live tonight. Y'all make sure that y'all keep your eyes open for it. Because, yeah, he, I mean, they were, they, they tried to gang up on me. I was like, man, I thought it was all up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, they, they legit tried to gang up on the old dog. Well, I said, okay. Okay, so yeah, little side. Look, if they go live, yeah, we we, we got to jump on in there. Um, Padre says, "Hey, Coach Q uh, was asking about handling disappointment last night. We don't have all the billboard lawsuit money <laughs> like they do, so we just process and move on." Hello, I hang up. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Big boy, you fool, boy. Dun, dun, dun. That's a Superman check. 
<laughs> man, it was great to see you at camp uh, the day, Archangel. Man, I definitely enjoyed it. Man, definitely enjoyed it. Uh, Dre says, "Nah, nah, low, it's up." Hey, man, look, look. A, a lot of the guys they be getting a hundred in there, man. We we shoot two hundred. That's what we shoot for. We, we shoot for two hundred. Shouts out to my homeboys out of your Falcon mind. It says, "What a great day, bro." Uh, you get it, yeah, yeah. I had to get that now, boy. I was sitting, we was at a Mexican restaurant, man. I wanted to sit around and talk. But I was like, hey, y'all, uh, I got up Superman early this morning. I've been hot. I couldn't even eat, y'all. I was like, yeah, I need, I need to get me a nap. <laughs> I said, I need to get me a nap. I said, hey, man, um, uh, uh, I'm sure we can get together soon, but uh. I need to get me in there. I tried to come on earlier, but I couldn't do it. I had to I had to go lay down. Mr. CDX is in here, man. Move the chain game, boys. What's the, what in the world, bro? What's going on with you, man? I, uh, I talked it up my, uh, my boy, Mr. CDX, earlier, man. We had a great time, bro. Great time. Great time. Yeah, Unicorn, yeah, they catching balls, man. Running on, the, running on the rainbow. Catching passes. Man, boy. Norman Fitzgerald says, Oh my God, big low. What what in the world, Bo? Man, you see this, you you feel all of this, um uh you feel all of this this excitement that's in the air. You you know what it's from. Football is back, Bo. Football is back. We getting ready to make this run. We're gonna go ahead and win this division. We're gonna make this run and we're gonna do it big. Football is back. Got to love it. Our angel says out of your faculty mind with look, man. You got to love the energy, old John. Look, I, I, I think they stopped practice whenever old John, Mike, and Fleet walked into the practice. They're like, hey, wait a minute. All right, we're good to go now. We, we, we're good to go. John, John, Mike, and Fleet is in here. Now it's a party. Let's go. <laughs> Augustine says, Escape is going to be mad at you for giving it. <laughs> I hear you, uh, I hear you. <laughs> Town Dirty says, I'm a little bit late, uh, but who stood out and practiced for you today? So, um, I, I, I think today, and, and, you know, this is what we normally do as coaches, you know, because cause we like the, you know, it's all built on competition, right? Today, I felt like the, I felt like the defense won. You know, every day, you know, whenever we go through practice, we say, hey, offense won today, today. I think the defense won today. You know, we once again it was you know it, it, this wasn't a padded practice. Um, there were a couple of sacks. Uh, shouts out to uh, Desmond though. I, one thing that I seen them working on, and I'm pretty sure John uh, or Mike, who, whoever's in here from one time for the fan, um, and Archangel, he could also acknowledge. And one thing that I seen Desmond working on, he was working on his hard counts. I don't know if anybody else caught that. Desmond was working on his hard counts. One time, we got our, our offsides, but we had them jumping a couple of times. You know, they were jumping like the crisscross boys in the early 90s. We had them jumping a few times. That's something that's really, really important, especially in those short yardage situations or whenever you're coming um, to that green area, uh, whenever you want to make sure that you at least walk away with points. So, um... Desmond is really, really good at those hard counts. He has a really, really good voice for it. So, um, I yeah, that's something that I definitely, uh, um, I, I definitely uh, peeped out. Keith is in here. Keith says, "Ain't nobody uh, beat the birds but the rest." Keep rising, red and that's it, Bo. That's it. I'm especially last year should have beat Tampa Bay. Uh, Yuri said, "I had to take a nap right when I got home after camp." Too. Man, boy, I tell you, but that sun it'll beat you down. That son of a bitch, I was tired, bro. You know, we were, we were sitting around talking. Next thing you know, uh, you're like, hey, uh, hey, coach, I, I'm, I'm finna head out. I said, okay, you're, <laughs> okay, you're, <laughs> oh, man. Then, we hit, then I hit a little bit of traffic on 285 coming back. I was like, goodness gracious. Little side said, Big Q, he live right. Okay, okay. Well, well look, once we, once we finish up on here, then I'll definitely go check out old Big Q and talk a little bit of trash. Cause like I said, boy, they were they were on it last night, bro. I was like, man, this 
it's just the training camp just started. Y'all, y'all ain't even go. You ain't gonna take. You know, you you ain't gonna take your time with it and slide into it. Like, nah, yeah. So you know, I was like, look, I ain't for this. I ain't for. This, I ain't for do this with y'all tonight. I ain't for do this with y'all. I just, I just said, hey, y'all need to get that hate out your heart. But see, they tried to jump on me because I was solo. That's all that was. That's all that was. That's all that was. Uh, out of your faculty mind says Dre, uh, man, just relaxing in this AC. Man, it, man, it was hot out there, wasn't it? It was hot out there today. It was hot. B Mel said, "Low, I see your Facebook chill. Hey, man, that's hey, that's what we do, bro. That's what we do. We try to we try to try to do it big." Norman says, "I'm at the hospital right now, waiting on my baby to be born. Uh, last time I had a kid, we went to the Super Bowl." Hoping for a great juju. Hello. Hey, congratulations, Norman. Definitely, man. Definitely. Congratulations, my brother. Y'all make sure that y'all congratulate Norman, man. Um, bring a young one into the world. Man, that's that, that's that, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. You having a boy or a girl, Norman? If you don't mind me asking, you having a boy or a girl? Stephon says, hey, Big Low, you going through there on Saturday? I'll be there. Hey, we're going to try to slide through there, bro. We're going to try to slide through there, man. Man, congratulations, Norman. Definitely. Dre says, uh, uh, and that heat and flower ranch. I mean, sorry, our angel said that heat, boy, it was different, man. It was different. It was different, boy. I mean, it was, it was one of those situations where, like, like I, and like I said, uh, I actually had to help, help a lady out because, I mean, she passed out out there. And, um, you know, I, I, I went, I got some water from somebody and, um, you know, I put it on her neck and everything, and I mean, she she legit passed out. And then, you know, we you know we we got the medics to come over and help her out. But y'all, it was it was legit hot out there uh, today. So I mean, look, it's one of those cases where if y'all come out there, make sure that you hydrate before, during, and after, because you know if you don't, you know you, you're just gonna feel defeated when you leave. <laughs> you're just gonna feel defeated. Definitely, Mr. CDX. Uh, uh, y'all said congrats, Norman. Um, definitely, man. I Norman, thank you so much. You know, I I know that you know you probably got all kinds of things going through your mind and everything, but thank you so much for you know chilling out with us while you're having you know th this life changing event and everything. Um, uh, you know, you know why you having this life changing event? So. Yeah, man. Everybody in here congratulate you, Norman. That I mean, that's I mean, that's a beautiful thing, man. Uh, another boy, another boy. How about that? Um, Atlanta Bird Gang says congrats. Definitely out of your fucking uh, mind and about whatever. Era Archangel, definitely, man. Definitely out of your fucking mind. Shouts out to John. He says, uh, if y'all want to keep talking Falcons tonight, says uh, they're gonna be on fleek about nine tennis. Okay, so y'all gonna have a full night tonight. You know, I came on early. Then you got, if you know, we're going to go over here and talk some trash to Big Q and them. You know, and we've been to give them what, for. And then, you know, you got out of your falcon mind. Um, you know, they're going to be talking about some ball and everything. You know, talk about what they seen. Um, because, you know, you know, Mike, I, I mean, Mike, he already called it. He says, we're going 21 and 0. Um, we're going to the Super Bowl. Desmond Ritter is going to be the MVP. Uh, Arthur Smith gonna be the coach of the year, and I mean, Mike done caught it. Mike done told he, he done told me what it's gonna be. Man, you gotta love Mike, boy. You got to love Mike. <laughs> Man, our angel says, uh, uh, our angel says, yeah, we seen that lady pass out and Big Lowe's right there being the good citizen. <laughs> hey, man, look, I done seen so many people pass out. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, I, hey, you know, I, I ain't gonna lie, to you. I, I, I done passed out. My share of times too. <laughs> I, done, I done passed out my share of times too. So I was like, "Hey, man, you know, just to you know, just got to make sure that you know she she cools down, but don't cool down too fast, because um, you know that'll a lot of people don't know it. You cool down too fast, that'll make your blood pressure bottom out. So um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's it, we just tried to make sure that we was there to help her out because that that's scary, man. You pass out, that's scary. Shouts out to my brother in law. He's a he's a he's a paramedic. He was like, you know, whenever you pass out, that's basically your body saying, Hey, uh, you need to chill out for a minute. And it's basically like hitting the reset button. 
you know, your PS5. That, that That's basically what it is. Like, hey, you need to just chill out for a second. You pass out, you come back too. So, you know, whenever, you know, it's one of those situations where people pass out, he says, yeah, just let them pass out. Just make sure they're safe. And, you know, basically he said, just watch them. Make sure they wake up. <laughs> so, I mean, look, that, that, that's what I did. I said, hey, you know, just make sure she, you know, make sure she's good and, you know, make sure that she's comfortable and try to cool her down slowly and not, you know, just pour cold water on her. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad that she's okay because cause that's, a, that's a scary situation, man. All right, um, I'm sorry, Angel says, how's Bijan looking? I need to know. Bijan is looking the part. You know, I'm pretty sure Archangel, um, um, out of your Falcon mind, guys, um, I'm pretty sure they'll tell you. Um, look, it's one of those situations where, um, just like Grady Jarrett said, if you go and watch his tape, and you see it in person, like, the guy has fast feet. It's just like Lil Shice said, why he run like that? Like, why he run? I mean, he's he's legit one of those guys. Anytime he gets the ball, he could go for six. Like, they're, and I'm pretty sure everybody that was there, um, um, everybody that was there, uh, Hal Poole, he probably seen it himself because he was there. Like, there was a, a couple of times where it's like, you could tell if it was a legit game, he would have got six, like on 50-yard plays. He, he just had that safety out there on skates. And if the safety would have got hands on him, he was look, like he, he ran with so much force, he looked like he was going to break it. Maybe I'm just getting naked. I don't know. But uh, Angel, he looks legit. Like, he looks the part. Looks like he says, uh, go to Big Low Country Street Baker or Barrett Parkway. <laughs> Street Bakery. Oh, wait a minute. There's a big, there's a big low country street bakery. What in the world? Oh, Barrett Parkway out there. Man, that's crazy. Oh, look, Coach, Coach Runner gave me permission to come on Saturday, Stefan. Coach. <laughs> Congratulations, Norman. Congratulations. Make sure that you, um, yeah, man, that's a, hey, that, uh, look, man, I, I'm just, I'm just flattered the fact that you, you, you know, you, you, while all of this was going on, I'm just flattered that you had a chance to, to chill out with us, you know, while all of this was going on. And, you know, just like you said, good juju, last time you had a baby, we went to the Super Bowl. So, hey, man, you never know. Sanchez is in here and says, what's up, Big Low? I finally caught you online. What in the world, Bo? Yeah, you know, it's a little bit of a different time today because, you know, it's one of those cases we, uh, you know, we just got back from training camp and, I, you know, I took a nap. So, so we got a chance to um, come on. I just wanted to kind of let y'all know what we seen. Uh, Tony Wright says, good signing, bringing back uh, McCole Harmon. I'm McCole Harmon. McCole, Michael Pruitt, uh, now Pitts, I could play more at wide receiver. And, I, and, and, you know, that's a good point, Coach Tony Wright. I can definitely see him lining up at wide receiver a little bit more. Um, like I said, those packages, those packages that I seen today were nasty. I mean, those guys were – you know, I seen Kyle Pitts lined up next to uh, B. John Robinson um, offset. I mean, it was it was crazy, man. It was crazy. A little shite said uh, B. John not uh, knocked over Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates, he hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. Jesse Bates was driving the struggle bus a little bit today. I'm just gonna throw. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna roll that out there. You know, you look at the highlights. Jesse Bates, he was, he was hey. Just base driving that struggle bus a little bit today, Bo. The whole play with John O. Smith, he hit with uh, came back in on him. He tried to grab him. First of all, that was a game. See, first of all, if that was a game, that would have been a holding call. That would have been a defensive holding call all day. But, I mean, the fact that, you know, he kept running, basically, like, it was one of those situations where, like, ain't nothing even happened. Hey, Bo. John O. Smith, he's the. He's the truth. He's the truth. And just like y'all called it, whenever we got John o. Smith, y'all said it. Y'all said, hey, man, um, he's going to be a problem uh, for other teams for years to come. Well, look, man, I need y'all, if you haven't yet, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a live in the future. Also, make sure that you hit that like button. We went to the first open practice of training camp, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. 
I feel very encouraged with what I've seen today, especially on the defensive side of the ball. One thing, a few things that you could take away from um, from this stream um, and from what I've seen today is that the young defensive talent is on a whole nother level than they have been in the past. Um, so, you know, like I said, your Clark Phillips, your Zach Harrisons, your Jeff Akutas, um, Troy Andersons, they, they look legit. Um, the things that I was impressed with on the offensive side of the ball, like I said, Mac Hollins made a lot of good catches. John o. Smith, he made a lot of good plays. B. John Robinson looks legit. Um, Drake London, he was just doing Drake London like things. Um, I think one of the main things that we need to focus on, you know, we can't act like it's uh, something that, you know, we just need to ignore. We got to work on that deep ball accuracy. What's going on, Antonio? Uh, we got to work on that deep ball ac accuracy. Dre, a statement says, Big Law, I heard Felipe Frank showed up to camp today. That's all I heard. He just shot. <laughs> Hal Poole says, everybody I talked to today said, this is a very different team. It's something special happening here uh, with this team. Also, don't worry about uh, Big Campbell. It's a non-football injury uh, called Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Tonyo says, "Big dog, I heard you yelled up. The, uh, I heard that you ran up the middle of the field and yelled, i 'I'm him.' Come on, bro. What? <laughs> I didn't have to say it. They said it on the field for me. That's that's, that's what happened. That's what happened. But yeah, I mean, uh, but don't, those are the things that I, I kind of took away from this. I'm, I'm really feeling like this defense is um, uh, a whole nother level, um, and." I stand by what I said initially whenever I made my Ryan Nielsen video. I feel like this defense could be top 10. I feel like they could definitely be top 10, a top 10 defense this year. Um, and I feel like, you know, they have a chance to be that good for years to come. So I'm definitely excited to see see what we got going on. Tony Wright says, Zach Harrison um, is going to prove to be a steal in the third round this year. And it, that's like I said earlier, Coach Tony. Um yeah, you know, the people going to say he was a first-round talent and, you know, he was a sleeper. But look, man, I need y'all to stay safe. Please don't do anything that I would do. I'm going to go over here and jump on Big Q's channel right now um, because, like I said, Big Q, he, Big Q was talking some trash last night. So y'all make sure that y'all go over to Pro Media Network. As a matter of fact, that's his channel right there. The Pro Media Network, the P.R.O. Media Network, New Orleans Saints News. Y'all make sure that y'all go over there. I'll meet you over there um, in just a few minutes, and we're going to represent for these Falcons because they was talking some trash last night. They were talking some cash money trash. So, yeah, y'all make sure that y'all go check them, uh, check out my boy Big Q. Also, uh, the Audio Falcon Mind guys, they're actually going live a little bit later on tonight as well. Uh, Shouts out to all the content creators. Once again, it's one of those situations, guys. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. You know, shouts out to everybody who's brave enough to get on here and talk about some good football, man. You got to love it. In the meantime, I need y'all to stay safe. Please don't do anything that I would do. And look here, man. It's going down like this. Wait a minute. Big Q. Big Q said, what? <laughs> Big Q said, what? Wait a minute. I thought... So somebody came over here, somebody was like, yeah, you know, Big Q, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 Big Q, yeah, he live right now. So, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, y'all go on there um, and uh, show Big Q, show Big Q what's going on. Big Q said, nothing but love, but right, what? Rise up! Somebody that had Big Q paid. I need to call to check up on my brother. Big Q, all right? Big Q said, rise up. I know that ain't Big Q. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> no, 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 no. This ain't Big Q. Somebody that had Big Q page. I gotta call my bro. I got as a matter of fact, I'm finna call him right now. Let me call Big Q. Let me call I'm gonna call Big Q while we on live right now. I'm gonna see if he answered the phone. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me see if he answered the phone, y'all. He said, Rise up. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. I know Big Q ain't say rise up.
Q, you all right, Bo? Yes, sir. I'm good. How you doing, Lo? Ain't nobody hacked your page, did they? No, sir. No, sir. Oh, well, I'm just making sure. I just see you rise up. I'm like, wait a minute. You okay? You ain't got no fever or nothing, do you? Rise, rise up to go down. <laughs> Q, you need to keep that hate out your heart, bro. You need to keep that hate out your heart, Q. <laughs> I was like, man, is Q okay? Hey, man. Man, much love to you and the family over there. Much love to you and the family over there, my brother. I was like, man, Q got a fever? Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, look. Look, man. I was like, man, somebody in a hat, Q page, everything okay? Oh, okay. See? See, it's a good thing I didn't see it. It's a good thing I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. We we definitely do. You you live over there now? No, no, sir. Oh. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay. Popping, oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Man, come on. Come on, Q. Come on, Q. <laughs> Ain't no need for all that, Q. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I'll let you later on, my brother. All right, my brother. Appreciate you. Man, all right. <laughs> man, boy, you got a little bit Q, man. That's my brother, man. That's my brother. Look, man, I need y'all to stay safe. Please don't do anything that I would do. Y'all take it easy, man. Rise up. A time down. We ready.